hired gun is like standing in the shadows of Motown, or Denis Tedesco is the wrecking crew, but instead of solely documenting prominent studio and live musicians of a certain past, it details the lives of current working sidemen. The movie has a duality in it that it champions the fact that to be a hired gun one needs to be an elite level player, while at the same time showing that each one of them is just a normal person working hard at their craft. Hired Gun is the best available musician. Nobody will know who he is, but he gets the gig because he's the elite player. You're sitting in the front row to a very glamorous lifestyle, but it has nothing to do with you. On the front, these musicians are gigantic rock stars, part of a huge spectacle, larger than life. In reality, they are part of the machine that creates that spectacle, a piece of the entertainment, a part of that image, and a big part of why they are there is because they just don't miss. I mean, everybody in my band's an A-list player. I just don't have time for B-list guys. If you're not great tonight, you may lose your gig tomorrow. Many drummers are featured in the documentary with Kenny Aronoff and Liberty DeVito having significant screen time, as they should. This makes sense if you've ever seen an interview with either of them. In fact, for the one night special screening, Aronoff hosted a red carpet style intro before the movie and a Q&A with the crowd afterward. Ding! One thing you'll notice throughout the movie is that while the musicians featured all have different personalities, they all have a similar temperament. For starters, they are all masters at what they do. To take that a step backwards, it goes to show that they all love to play. That's what drives them. I'll never be as great as I want to be, but I am willing to spend the rest of my life trying to be as great as I can be. Many of the musicians talk about how much they practice in their formative years, not because they were made to, but because they enjoyed it. When I see little kids down the front, I always go, yeah, that was me. I was one of them kids. That mastery gives them a confidence that shows through their playing. A concept that is often talked about in Hired Gun is the approach to playing to the song. I'm there to be a supportive band member, to the artist, to the other musicians, to the audience. To me, that approach is born of confidence. Someone who is not confident in their playing will try to impress and cover with notes. A person who has true mastery of their instrument and confidence in their performance will play when they need to and sit back when appropriate. This confidence also allows them to have an easygoing persona. That is not to say laid back. I don't think anyone would consider Kenny Aronoff to be laid back. Hit a symbol! In the last moments of the movie, Alice Cooper, who was interviewed in depth for the documentary as a band leader that uses many hired guns, says something along the lines of, why hasn't anyone ever put a group of these guys together? They're all great players. He says that, but he also knows that many have tried that, and for whatever reason, it is hard to transition from being a musician to the star. For years, I've been like, I don't want to be a side guy anymore. But how do you say no to Bon Jovi? Anyway, Cooper's statement gives way to a blues jam to end the movie, and unfortunately, this movie in general has a few too many of these jam scenes. I think they tried to limit them, but honestly, I could do without all of them. They are placed in the movie to show that the players can play, but we really already know that. So the music just kind of comes off as boring. What you see on the screen is the same thing that you see at a local bar on Tuesday night, but just played perfectly, played to a much higher level, and played exactly to your expectations, so it ends up just being good, but not interesting in any way. The only other thing that I wish would have happened with the documentary is uh, if the filmmakers were able to get a little bit more of the music licensing. They talked about it in the Q&A, that they just had a, a big trouble getting some of the rights to certain songs and things like that. So, um, and if you know anything about music licensing, it's really tough. Uh, if you followed, I had mentioned uh, Denny Tedesco's The Wrecking Crew, and that movie got held up for years. It was done for years, but got held up because of the uh, music licensing. But no one would touch this damn thing because the music. And they all said- The licensing. The licensing. The best moment in the movie, hands down, is a story that Greg Upchurch of Three Doors Down and other bands uh, tells about a chance encounter with Matt Sorum. I don't want to give it away, but that moment alone is worth the price of admission. It also really says a lot about what it means to be a hired gun. I think that the movie makes the world of these musicians feel very small. It seems like there's about 20 musicians we're talking about that have made every single record that everybody owns. And while it is true that it is very insular, 
it should be noted that the pool of musicians and gigs for said musicians is much larger than can be fit into a two-hour documentary. I personally know four or five players that are doing this kind of thing, and two of which that have resumes that easily could have put them in this movie. In fact, one of them has actually played with four of the band leaders that are uh, featured in this film. I suppose what I'm trying to say is that if you or a student of yours is looking into joining this world to do this work, it's worth taking a shot at. A good barometer might be to grab a copy of the movie. And if you're watching it and you're thinking, these are my people, well, you just might be a hired gun. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's hit it.